G'day and welcome to a very COVID safe <laughs> Gooch episode. Yes, look at this silly thing, hey? What do you think of this? Bass the Cat got me this. Yes. Yes, little darling. So, uh, when I go out in public, I'm completely COVID safe now. Yes, because we uh, have to do that again in Queensland. I'll talk more about that later. But, um, yes, right, okay. Look, this is a very special edition of the Gooch. And this has only been made possible by the support of all of you people on Patreon. So thank you very much, each and every one of you. Basque thanks you from the bottom of her fishbowl. Yes, she's not starving anymore. Thank goodness for that. Now, what do you think of this? Yeah. That, and, and I've got a new T-shirt too. Yes. We will get on with that um, Stingray build uh, later this year. Honest. Really want to do it. Yes, it's on my list. It's not on your list, it's on my list. Anyway, that's what you came here for. You came here for a tug. <laughs> yes, and what are we going to tug at this time? Well, it's going to be the vexing problem of acrylic paint and how the difficulties and the, the things, the differences when you transition across when you've been using enamels, right? As I did. It was enamel paint when I started. That was it, Humbro and Emerald. And then along came these acrylics, but they're all kind of different. They had different properties. What the hell was going on? Luckily, I have a degree in science and I studied chemistry at university. It's the only way I bloody cope with all this shit, I tell you. So, this will be the unpainted gooch, where we try and figure out the mysteries of what is and what isn't an acrylic paint. And I'll tell you right now, it does not mean water-based. Not in the slightest. Want to know more? Roll the music. All right, acrylic paint. Yeah, it's not water-based. Not at all. Get that out of your head right now, okay? Tamiya acrylic paint. Not water-based. It's alcohol-based, based on butanol. All right. SMS range of acrylic paints. Not water-based. They're lacquers, okay? The new Humbrol paints. It's an acrylic pigment, but it's an enamel paint, right? They also have water-based paints, and they are water-based paints. Same pigment, acrylic pigment. The same pigment can be used in enamel, lacquer, alcohol, and water-based paints, okay? Acrylic is just a pigment, that's all. It's just the stuff they've ground up. It's not an oil-based pigment, all right? The pigment is a water-based pigment, sort of. But what they mix it with, what they use as the binder, okay, which is a chemical that holds the thing together sort of in gelatinous lump, so you have paint. And the thinner, which is the thing that lets you flow it, okay, and lets you airbrush it and aerosol it in the brush and get it across, and then that all evaporates off and dries, right? Thinner and binders, without those two things, you ain't got paint. All you got is some ground up pigment. So the pigment, which is what you want to get on your model, okay, and you want it to stay there, so it needs glue. So if you like, the binder is glue. It binds the molecules or the, the you know, the molecules of the um, pigments together, and it's usually a, um, well, it's sort of like a gelatine type sort of thing, all right? Some people actually buy forms of gelatine, and um, they'll buy industrial quality bloody jelly and things like that. What the hell is it called? Uh, my brain's escaped me for the moment, and I'll come back to that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, people go down and, and, and buy that sort of stuff from the chemist, and then they mix up their own supposed um, thinners, well, actually, all they've done is created a binder, and then they might mix alcohol with it and whatever else, or lighter fluid, which is basically another form of alcohol. Now, lacquer, thinner, like turpinol, turpinol, turpentine. Turpinol is a funny one, um, but it is still basically one of these groups. Uh, petrol, turpentine, methanol, um, kerosene, alcohols, right, they all derive from that same carbon-based group. So petrol is one form of it, and it makes your car go, unless you've got an electric car, okay? And then they just burn coal at a big power station, and then that goes into electricity and makes your car go, yeah. So you're not actually saving the fucking planet anyway, are you? No, but electric cars are good, I'm going to get one, yeah, just because I want to plug the thing in. I like gadgets, yes, that's why we buy them, we like bloody gadgets. Anyhow, where was I? Um, 
I got a bit of traffic here this morning. Piss off, bastards. Why don't you... You're, you're late for work, you asshole. you get fired. we got fuck all jobs as it is. Right. Uh, back to the gooch. Right. So, you're getting your head around this. Acrylic just means the pigment. So, lack of paint, more than likely these days, has an acrylic pigment. And some of them are even marketed as such. SMS at least says it's an acrylic lacquer which confuses the fuck out of so many people. But basically, it's an acrylic pigment using a lacquer thinner, okay? And then glycerol. Glycerol is the word I was trying to think of. Oh, God. <laughs> so what? Anyway, it's, it's rough when you're getting old. Yes, I'll be in my seventh decade in less than a month. I know. Can you believe that? Ugh, it's scary. It's scary. Do the math. I won't be 70. Do the math. You'll figure it out. Right. Um, so, acrylic paints. Okay. Not necessarily water-based. So here's where some of the problems was. Okay, you're used to using Humbrol enamel. Great paints. Absolutely fantastic paints. You could pull an old Humbrol enamel pot out now, and with a bit of luck, if it hasn't been contaminated, if the seal was good in that tiny little jar, and you know they had those lovely suicide lids, as soon as you flick them over, the bloody jar would upend itself, and you got freaking paint everywhere. Yeah, they were great. <laughs> you can open up one of those now, give it a stir, and away you go. It'll probably still work. It'll probably still be good. You could thin it and you could airbrush it. Away you go. Fantastic stuff. Really good. Okay. Uh, lacquer paints. Absolutely superb. Brilliant. Lacquer is a fantastic medium for airbrushing. And lacquer will basically dry very quickly. So when you use a lacquer-based paint, even if it's the rattle cans from Tamiya, which I like actually, as um, soon as you've used them, the stuff will gas off very quickly and that will be dry in minutes, touch dry at least, and it'll be cured enough to do something with pretty well that day, you know, if not a few hours on a warm day. These are the sort of paints that really work well, but if you're an old bastard like me, who's had respiratory problems his whole life, well, you can't really use enamel paints anymore because you get really sick. And I'm talking my nose bleeding and passing out and finding myself lying on the floor with a bloody nose. That's, that's how bad it is for me. So I can't do it. I have respiratory problems from nine years of chronic bronchitis when I was younger. And although I grew out of it a lot better, as I've got older and as I've got fatter and as I've got goutier and as I've got fartier and all the rest of it, yeah, it's um, it's there. I'm often short of breath for someone who talks as much as I do. Well, this is why I talk, you see. I have to constantly oxygenate. Yes, I'm talking to save my life. Yes, you bastards. Stop bloody whinging, Bernard, that I talk too much. If I don't continually talk all the time, I die. Yeah. Do you want to kill me? Do you want that? Do you want that on your conscience? I made Harry Houdini stay silent for an hour. He went blue, fell over. He's dead. Yeah, yeah. That'll be good, won't it? Mm. Okay, well, enough of that. Um, back to the serious subject. Okay, so you've been using enamel paints for years. They're terrific. They thin beautifully. They clean out of your airbrush, no worries at all. Um, you can hand paint them on. They lay down terrifically. Oh, yeah, you don't need a primer. Away well, you go. Fantastic stuff. Okay, but you make the switch to water base for whatever reason for mine it's a bit of a health issue maybe you're now modeling with a family or you're a kid before you could make as much mess and smell and everything in your dad's garage or whatever it didn't matter um, but now you're at home you've got a family you're in one of the back bedrooms or something like that or maybe you've got a little nook in the um, in the living room and you cannot inflict all that smell and all those toxic fumes on your family, and that's understandable, okay, so that's okay. Yes, you can get a spray booth like I have, right, your spray booth. That will suck out some of it, but it doesn't do that good a job, not at all. In fact, I used some um, lacquer-based paint to try and touch up that it'll scary that I'm working on, because I could not get, for love or money, because of this bloody apocalyptic plague, I could not buy the rattle can with that shade of white that I had to do some touch-ups with it, because after two years, I suddenly had a good look at it and found it had some bass cares in it that I had to sand out. So I end up buying little bottles of um, Tamiya lacquer paint and lacquer thinner. And I thought a little bit, a little bit should be okay. I got the spray booth. Well, I was sick as a dog. And it took two to three days for the smell to get out of my hobby room, despite having the fan on constantly for that whole time. It just permeated everywhere. And I, I, I was so sick. I had massive headaches. Couldn't cope with it. Okay. So this thing, these fumes go everywhere and they permeate into everything. If you've got good health or, you know, you just don't care, fine, great, go. Look, use lacquer paints. They are terrific. Use enamel-based paints. They are terrific. But if you are transitioning to acrylics, well, water-based paints, there are some things to look out for. Now, first, 
Some of you will switch to Tamiya paints and go, ah, oh, look, they're acrylics. Well, it's acrylic pigment, but it's an alcohol-based butanol. And actually, it's a very good system. And I still have a bit of a problem with that, but the spray booth does take away the worst of it, and the alcohol kind of evaporates, and it's not too bad. That's a fairly safe option if you've got a spray booth that will vent to the outside. You can get away with that. And those paints are good. Bugger all colour range, but you can mix up any bloody colour you want. You don't need a primer. You can spray that stuff on, away you go. You can even thin it with lacquer if you want to, which led a lot of people to think that Tamiya paints were actually lacquer-based. Well, no, because of the butanol, and if you know your chemistry, right, ethanol is one of your lower-grade alcohols. It's got very few carbon atoms, and they move up into isopropyl, or propyl, propanol, and then butanol, away they go, okay? And butanol is quite toxic, actually. <laughs> it's, it's quite toxic stuff. It's um, certainly not as bad as lacquer, and it certainly is not as bad as using, say, enamel thinners, which are way up on the scale. Like, enamel thinners are getting very, very close to your petrols, okay? So if you like to sniff petrol and get high, yep, okay? Basically, enamel thinners are in that range. Now, the thinners for, for um, lacquers are slightly different. It's a celluloid type one. It's slightly different chemistry. They're actually more hazardous. The toxicity level isn't quite there, but they're actually more hazardous in that they actually destroy things. They'll eat stuff away. You really don't want to get that stuff on your hair and everything like that. It eats into all kinds of things. And anybody who's ever soaked a piece of plastic in um, lacquer thinners, they'll know what it does to it. It will destroy it. And it, will, it will basically eat it away. It's one of the reasons the lacquer paint works very well as a primer, or as you don't need a primer, is it actually eats into the plastic. It etches into it. Okay, so you don't want to use too much of it. No, don't drink any of this shit, kiddies. <laughs> Not that kiddies can watch these videos. They are now 18 plus for Patreon viewers. Yes, we have got rid of all those kiddies. Yes, so there you go, Facebook or Google or whoever the hell bloody behind all this. Some faceless bastard pushing bloody a button somewhere. Beep, beep, computer says no. Yes, well, fuck you. <laughs> this is now 18 plus. And we don't care about monetization because we have a whole lot of really nice people on Patreon. So thank you again, Patreon subscribers. Bask ate very well this month. Now, okay, so there's a little bit of chemistry. It's a lot more involved than that, but that's giving you an idea what's going on. Okay, let's get to the problems. So here you are, you've gone from um, you've gone from your enamels and you've used Tamiya, but the butanol, the alcohol, and that still may be a bit toxic. So you decide to go the whole hog and you're going to use these water-based paints that you've heard about. Vallejo, okay? Water-based paint, okay. AK Interactive, water-based paint. Ammo MIG, water-based paint. Life Color, water-based paint. Hataka, don't know, it's supposed to be, but I actually believe it's got a little bit of isopropyl in it. Because it, it does act a little bit like Tamiya, but not quite as much. But anyhow, let's look at the, the most common one, which is Vallejo, okay? So you've been a Tamiya spray painter, and the way you go and everything, you're always cleaning your brush with the Tamiya paint, and you don't have to clean it that much because basically it's almost the same operation as it was back with enamels. You know, you just give it a little bit of splash in the ring, it's fine. Next time you whack the paint and everything dissolves, away you go. Life is easy. It's really not that hard. Your entire regime for maintenance on your airbrushes, you know, occasionally you pull the needle out and give it a bit of a wipe with a bit of used dunny paper. Who cares, right? You know that um, enamel bloody thinner, it'll dissolve anything. There's nothing that's going to stand in this way. You're fine. And your, um, your O-rings, are oh, they're hanging in there. <laughs> They're hanging in there. Actually, they're lubricated nicely by the um, enamel thinner, and they actually get um, fairly lubricated by the alcohols. It's not until you get to the lacquers. Lacquer thinner and O-rings, yeah, they don't like each other, because, again, it's a celluloid thing. It's a cellular, celluloid, yeah. It, it's, it's a very artificial kind of substance that is actually naturally reactive to anything with a cell, right? So it eats anything. So plastic actually being a kind of celluloid product, okay? Uh, That's why insects will eat plastic. It's a food in some ways. Very weird. We can't, we can't quite digest it, but um, insects can. Right? Rats will eat it because to them it's kind of a food. Anyhow, not real good food, but anyhow. So, here you are. You've gone from enamel to using Tamiya paint, alcohol-based paints. They're not bad, they're okay, and you think, I'm going to go the whole hog and get water-based. So you, you've bought Vallejo. And Vallejo's a great brand. And away you go. 
But um, maybe you've bought model color and you haven't got onto model air yet, okay? Because there is a difference. Model air from Vallejo already thinned with their proprietary thinner, which is safe, and away you go, pop in the air rash, are off. Uh, but you've got model color. Actually, it wouldn't really matter if you've gone from Tamiya, because this is the point I'm trying to get to. Butanol in the Tamiya paint, even when you use their buddy thinner and their proprietary cleaner, you'll have a residue of alcohol in your airbrush. And unless you have scrubbed that out and cleaned it with detergent, like Windex, okay? Windex I use, the new Windex, not the old Windex. Use the old Windex, it'll stuff all your chrome because it had heaps and heaps and heaps of stuff in there that would basically destroy, disintegrate your chrome. But the new stuff is actually far less toxic, okay? So it doesn't have that reagent value in there that used to undermine the chrome. But still, its cleaning properties are still valid. So Windex in an airbrush that has had Tamiya paint will remove the alcohol. This is what you want. If you do not remove that alcohol, and then you get a water-based paint like Vallejo, AK, Ammo, MIG, Life Color, right? In your pot, away you go. It'll spray to start with, and within a few seconds, <laughs> Right? It's that. Snot. It will snot right up and you go, what the hell's going on? This acrylic paint is shit. No, it isn't. The fact is chemistry. You've gone from alcohol-based paint, you haven't fully cleaned your airbrush, you're now going to a water-based paint, there's a coagulation, and the paint just basically all rolls up. You think I do an experiment. Put a little bit on a bloody plate, right? Put a little bit of Tamiya paint, a little bit of a Velopo paint, put them together and see what happens, and they'll react and they'll turn into snot, okay? But take a bit of Vallejo paint and, say, some Ammo Mig or some AK Life Color, put them together, they mix perfectly. Now, the same thing happens with Steinol Res, but it's a polyurethane. So, it's not exactly an acrylic, because, well, it is. It's got acrylic binders and it's got acrylic um, pigments in there, okay? But it's water-based. It certainly dissolves and thins with water, no problem at all. You can also thin it with lacquer, surprisingly. Some people reckon they use isopropyl on it. I can't see how the hell that would work because you should have the contamination problem. I do know that an airbrush that's had Tamiya paint in and, so this, and hasn't been cleaned using Windex and still has residual of the butanol, when you put Steinol Res or any polyurethane paint in, you will start to get the snot effect. The tip will dry to gunk up and dry up and everything like that. This brings me to the next problem that people have when they start using water-based paints is tip dry. Now, when you're using your um, enamel thinners and your alcohol thinners and your um, lacquer thinners, you don't really get this because the thinner is constantly evaporating and so as the air rushes across the tip of the needle, even though it's kind of drying it off a little bit, there's enough of that oily stuff to keep it rolling and sliding off the tip of the needle. What happens with acrylic paints though, if your pressure is too high or if it's a really hot dry day, as I've had, I've had days you know, 30 odd degrees and tried to airbrush and the airbrush just goes and the reason why is the paint is literally drying through the action of the air running over the tip of the needle. So by the time it gets to the end of the needle, it's dry. And so you get tip dry. Now, one way to avoid tip dry with water-based paints is to soak your needle in a bit of Windex to start with. The Windex is a disruptor. It is not a thinner. But what it'll do is the Windex will leave a little film on there of the um, detergent. And when you put your um, acrylic paint, uh, water-based acrylic paint in your airbrush and away you go, there'll be just enough on there that it'll allow flow. And then when you sort of feel it, the flow isn't quite there, right? You're spraying and you, your flow starts to slow down a bit. Before you get to clogging, you always have on hand a tissue, as all of us wankers do, a tissue with, this time, Windex. Don't use a Windex covered tissue if you're wanking. Well, you could. Your, your dick will get nice and clean, but it's probably not very good for it. Anyhow, um, so what you do is you just dip your tip, you dip your tip of your airbrush on the Windex, the wet Windex tissue, and keep going, okay? Solves all your problems, solves your problems. You can also thin your water-based paint with a little more water. Now, be very careful here because water ain't water. Just the same as acrylics ain't acrylics, well, water-based. 
If your water is from a rainwater tank and you live in a pristine place like I did out in the country, you're fine. You might have a little bit of dust in it, but basically your water uh, doesn't have a hardness or a softness. Okay, So it is not acidic or basic. It's not chemically reactive. But if you're in the city, you probably got fluorine and God knows what else and seagull poo and you know everything and, and old copper pipes and old bloody lead pipes that have actually dissolved and so you've got bloody electrolytes flowing through there. You got everything. You got everything in that water. You got grandma's soup in that water. Okay? And that water out of your tap running through your airbrush is going to create chemical reactions. Not so much with your enamel your alcohol or your lacquer. We don't care about that. I'll scrub them out. No problem at all. This is why you disinfect things with alcohol, right? Kills all that. You can have bacteria in that water, okay? Anyhow, the water at the tap is shit. Don't use it in your airbrush. Well, if you do, clean thoroughly. You're better off buying some distilled or spring water. You're not going to use a lot to clean and thin. You really aren't. I buy... One of these, okay? It doesn't have. To, I'm not selling pump. I'm just saying it's a liter of basically supposed to be spring water, and you can tell by the smell. There's no smell of that fluoride that they put in their bloody things, right? No fluoride or whatever, right? Okay. It's not like um, water out of a swimming pool it doesn't have chlorine in it. It's even worse. So it won't be acidic. Or if you were getting say water out of a um, a bore, it's probably going to be basic. It'll be very um, well, my brain is not working this morning. I, I used to know all this chemistry, okay? So it won't be acidic, it'll be alkaline, basic. Okay, goodness me, how can I forget that word? Well, it's getting old, it's terrible. Turn these old timers, it's kicking in, it's kicking in. Anyhow, my point is, if you've got water-based paints, like you would buy thinner for your other paints, either buy the proprietary thinner from the manufacturer, which is not cheap, I'll admit, their thinners are ridiculous prices, or buy a bottle of water. This is like, I don't know, a dollar, maybe two. And that'll last me a month or two. It's not expensive. And the thing is, if you waste paint because you've got the wrong thinner, that's going to cost you money. And it'll cost you more money because you have to buy more paint. You have to buy more cleaners. You might have to buy another airbrush if you completely gunk the thing up. So, if you've got water-based paints, those are the tips. Use water that is not acidic or alkaline right that has not got bloody fluorines and chlorines and all the rest of it in it which are acids or it hasn't got um, the base stuff like i think they call that hard water okay it doesn't have the base um, which is usually when they're drawing it out of a pump somewhere and there's lots of calcium carbonate and those sort of things and that basically makes it very basic either way the water is contaminated if you've got tank water, as long as your tank's clean, right? As long as you've got no bloody, uh, you know, freaking possums pissing in there and all the rest of it. As long as it's, you're sure it's clean, you'll be okay. But you're better off going and just buying a bottle of spring. Um, well, even spring water can be a little bit basic. It depends. You need to check and find out, say to them, is your spring water hard? And usually it isn't. Good spring water isn't hard because it's come from way down low. Okay, as opposed to just a bore, a bore is only getting it from the upper layers, which therefore can have contaminants from the soil. So, acrylic paints, they can be great, like a polyurethane like Steiner is, dries very quickly, dries very hard. You can sand it in 15 minutes here in our warmth. You can basically you know, do anything you like to. You can you can run layers over and hairspray and chip it and everything. I did a video once. I shot the whole thing continuously. Like the video is only 15 minutes long. And admittedly, there were breaks, but there weren't many. And I put on water-based Steiner Res primer. Had a cup of coffee. Came back. Added my hairspray. Had a coffee. Came back. Added my coloured layers. Had a coffee. Came back. Totally zoned out on coffee. But I was able to then do a chipping video. And I did that all in the space of an afternoon, like two hours. And that was, you know, from bare plastic all the way up to my layers and chipped. Now, you couldn't do that with enamels. It didn't. They wouldn't try. They wouldn't cure enough in time. Even if you do the Tamiya trick, you're still going to need a, a primer base coat. And that's going to have to have set. And you're still going to need a bit of time. So acrylics dry really fast, which is good. It does make them hard to hairy brush. 
you um, you can get some retarders, like for Vallejo and a few other colour. They have a thing called a retarder. They even have it you can put in your airbrush to stop it drying quickly because as water-based paints, they dry almost, if not faster, than lacquers. So you can buy a little retarder which will basically slow that down, especially if you're hand touching up and hand painting with acrylics. It's good to have the retarder because that'll give you a bit extra time to work with it for your, uh, your little brushes hard as a friggin' rock. Alrighty, um, what else? I don't know what else there is I could talk about there. Probably the best idea is if you've got other questions about acrylic paints and what are the secrets or, you know, or even if you've got some tips or even if you think what I've said is absolute bullshit and you've got better ideas. Well, good luck to you. <laughs> Although I may have got the carbon groups mixed up. My brain has not been working very well this morning. I'm sorry. I've had a bit of a bit of a bad week, but um, we're getting there. We're getting there with your support. We are getting here. So thank you again to all the Patreon supporters. You are making these extra videos possible. You're giving me the incentive to do it. Not only that, you're monetizing me enough to do it. In our first month, we made literally three times what um, YouTube's ever paid me on a good month, and closer to. Um, 10 times what I was getting paid this time last year by YouTube. So who gives a rat's ass about YouTube and Google and AdSense when I can have you guys supporting me and I can produce the videos you want and I enjoy doing. Everybody wins. Well, everybody except Google. Ah, yeah, stuff them. <laughs> oh, they'll still make money out of me. They'll still rape me over and bend me over the table like they always do. Bastards. All right, well, that's the end of this video. Like, subscribe. Well, actually, you're already subscribed because you're on my Patreon channel. But if this is later on when I may have released it to the Great Unwashed, like, subscribe, comment, be nice about it. If you've got some facts or information you'd like to share about um, acrylic paints, let me know. I'm always open to being proved wrong, but proved is the word. Not your opinion, right? Opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got one and nobody thinks theirs stinks. Don't care about your opinion. I want to know facts. If you know a fact, I'd like to listen to it, okay? So, that's the end of this video after upsetting everybody. No, I haven't. I'm just being clear about that, all right? If you've got something to say, make sure you can back it up with some facts, all right? Because basically everything that I say, I know from experience. And it's not my opinion. They're facts that I know, okay? I may have forgotten them or got them wrong. And sure, I'll pull me up on that, by all means. And I'll um, I'll double check my research material next time. Oh, goodness. All right, anyhow, this is probably one of the longest targets I've had in a while. <laughs> But I think we've basically got to the end of it. So that's it for now. It's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Houdini.